Why? Why'd you start with that? Dread it. Run from it. It's Friday. Okay. I'm nothing. I'm here. Here I am doing Friday stuff. Well, you never gave me the questions. I did. I never printed them. <laughs> I never printed them. Oh no, you guys are stuck with me now. I don't know what to talk about. You can talk about uh, what you love about Tony Stark. Well, yeah, but you have to edit that in. I'm going to edit that in. Well, nobody knows why you called it Tony Stark. Yes, they do. This is Tony Stark, his watch that he built in a cave out of parts. Which is exactly what I did. <laughs> no, I, I just said you. I know me. Oh, okay. Uh, what else can I talk about? We're... I often forget. I, I Every now and then, I keep thinking that, that Tony Stark is a real person and he's dead. No, Tony Stark is not a real person, but he is, in fact, dead. <laughs> it... I bet you he's going to come back as AI, though. I don't know. You don't? I don't know. All right, well. This is probably incredibly boring for everybody. Is it? Yes. Well, I'm just waiting for the thingy to go. Oops. Oops? Well, I had the chronograph running. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you think about that strap? I like it. I think it's interesting. And no, I, are, are you being nice, though? Because, I mean, you're going to be part of the process here. Well, that's another thing you need to edit in that people don't know what you're talking about. It's a, well, they'll figure it out. <laughs> They're smart people. They know what's going There's on. There's going to be an edited in bit about this strap. Do I like it? Yes, I like its flexibility. Um, I like how it's not terribly busy. Yeah. And there are air holes. I like that it's very, very different than like a Tropic strap. I like that it's, I mean, it, even though it is, a, it's a Tropic 2000. I just, it doesn't have that particular like 60s feel to it. Anyway. Now I have Happy them. Friday. Happy Friday. I might need to rush off at some point because Sebastian's potty training. And he but he's doing really well. Yes, but he might need help. So, uh, I guess I'll start. What? Time to start. Time to st you should have got a haircut today. I had stuff to do. <laughs> From Joe Ross, you are nice folks. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> nice of you to say. I, I put that in there because it's like, you know, I always feel like we're fooling people. I know. <laughs> I had, I mean, I've had people say, God, you're like the Bob Ross of watches. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not a particularly calm person. No. Your channel has become one of my all-time favorites. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed the channel. Yes. And I'm glad that you think we're nice. What? Nothing. I think you're nice. I think you're nice. Oh. I, I don't know. Maybe just... I always feel vaguely like, of course, it's imposter syndrome. That's what it is. It's imposter syndrome. I feel like I'm fooling people. No, you're not. Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, go on. From Andy Herwitz. Hello, Andy. I continue to be flummoxed by the colors of the second hand and subdial on the 6139 6000 speed timers. I've seen crimson red and tomato red, orange and yellow, which are correct, and were there Seiko service replacements? And please demonstrate a two-piece second hand. Uh, I'll have to dig out a two-piece second hand. I'll, I'll do that here in a little bit. But um, the color, like if it's a 60... If it's 6139, 6032, or 6031, or whatever, they came with orange. It was almost like a like a hunter safety orange. But that orange fades like crazy. It, it goes to a light orange, and then like to like a faintly like yellowish color, and they can fade almost to white. I don't know why. It's whatever that pigment is that they used. Um, but the the reds are if it's those special JDM speed timers, they didn't come with red. It was always the orange. Um, but yellow is not incorrect because yellow is orange faded down. Um, the reds, for some reason, don't fade. I don't know why. They don't fade at all. He just dumped all his goldfish over the edge. I heard them. I was wondering what that was. It was goldfish. The dog uh, is outside, though. Why would he dump that? He loves goldfish. Because they're the bunny ones. They're the annies, and he does not like those. So he dumps them down the stairs. For the dog. Who is outside. Okay. From Jim Snyder. Do you ever think about being a one watch guy? If so, what would it be? Oh, God. I never figured out an answer to that question. Then why'd you put it on there? Because I was going to take time to think about it. Well, that I guess that's your answer. I've never come up with something that People would allow... People ask that every once in a while, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've been searching for one watch, like, the whole time I've been doing this. I would love to have one watch that I just wore... I mean, I have to say, 
I mean, this Rolex is beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful watch. Um, I mean, it's got the 24 hour hand and it's just, it's a really classic, elegant watch. Um, and because it's not a Seiko, it doesn't feel like a work watch to me. So I don't really think about it that much. Um, I don't know. God, it's, I just, I would need a watch that was, for me, that was automatic, probably chronograph, 39, maybe, maybe 38, but like 39 to maybe 41 millimeters. Um, again, automatic, uh, with minimum a date, um, uh, day, date preferable, but, um, that's what I'm, that's really my thing. And I want it to be a modern movement, something that I can, something that I can really depend on and not think about too much. And that is still a work of craft and art. I don't know. No. He just let Mr. Doggy in. Yes. Mr. Doggy's going to eat some yellow number five. <laughs> I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go clean. From Joseph Folk. Hi, Spencer. Thanks for the response. I have not done anything to damage the watch other than daily wear. I don't even expose it to water or detergents. Okay, so this was about the, the new Arnie. Uh, the fellow who he said he had seal failures almost immediately. Um, that's crazy. I, I That's just a flat-out materials failure. What is Seiko thinking? They've been making... They've been making rubber watch seals for 60 years? Uh, and I don't know. That's just... I don't get it. I, I don't understand it. I, I don't know. Maybe it was assembled incorrectly and the seal wasn't in the channel... I don't know. It's really weird. They seem to have these just weird, persistent QC issues. I'm just astonished. Uh, if anybody else has any issues with this particular thing, the seals on the new Arnie, let me know. I'd like to hear about it. Uh, the next comment is about the same thing. Uh, Mr. Gino Hydra. Uh, interesting. I've only seen one Seiko gasket fail, and it was for an SRP773 crown. That's one of the new 62, it was 6309 reissues. Brand new in box from Japan, and despite the plastic container being sealed, the gasket was like a pl was like a piece of plastic and broke after I applied some tweezer pressure. Luckily, I ordered three, so it wasn't a big deal. So yet, I'd call it a failure. Wow! So the crown seal, because those things have the same kind of crown seal as like a an SKX 007 or any of those things, they're going to have the same seal. Uh, and it was literally it was as hard as plastic. The black seal on the crown itself. That's crazy. That's some kind of crazy talk. I'm back. Adrian Hargreaves, nice strap on the GMT. Thank you very much. Um, hey, you know, we made that wrist check video. We didn't find a place to put it in. Huh. Why, don't we, why don't we do that now? <laughs> so now we have entered the wrist check portion of the uh, of the of the video. I'm sorry to, to disappoint, but. We're both wearing the same brand. Sorry. Sorry. I'm back to wearing this. My, uh, my, my, uh, 16753. Uh, because I, I found, I just, I was getting real stressed out about trying to sell this because I don't want to sell it, but I value her opinion so much that it. I didn't tell you to sell it. No, I know you didn't, but the fact that you don't like it very much makes I me. I don't like lots of things. Me, for instance. I you. But uh, then, but I had always struggled because the, the original bracelet is kind of blingy and it's a little too much gold for me. But then I actually found this. I forgot I bought it. This is a, a brand new, new old stock vintage 70s strap, which I actually really like. It's a different configuration than you find today. Very thin down at the bottom and then it tapers up in this sort of this big sort of shelf right there. And it looks great. Super, super comfy to wear. <clears throat> Oops, I made it shake. There, that's what I'm wearing. Back, back to old faithful. Yeah, uh, there's too much light. There we go. So there, I, I ventured for a few weeks wearing something different, but here we are. I had to wait until the calendar went all the way around. It was close enough. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, okay. Silly yeah, us. silly us. Yes, thank you, Adrian. I do like the strap very, very much. It's it, it's a nice vintage strap, and I especially not only is the material good, 
I like the, but the, the dimensions of it are really great. I love that it's not too thick. I mean, it's probably 12 millimeters down at the stra at the end here, which is pretty small. Uh, um, you said uh, it would look great on your Speedmaster. Are you still in love with it, by the way? Which Speedmaster? Uh, if you mean my Omega Speedmaster, my Moonwatch, probably would look really good on that yeah, watch. Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. Yeah, I think it would look really nice. Yeah, of course I'm still in love with it. I am... I haven't been wearing it recently, but because I tend to prefer watches that are automatic. Uh, but there we are, Julie Hill. If the Rubier Sabrina is wise in it on her wrist, the oldest trick in the book. Buying something for yourself or your partner. Look what I bought for you or me. Ha ha. <laughs> I, the reason I put that in there is one, I legitimately did buy it for Sabrina. I thought she would really enjoy it. it didn't occur to me that she wouldn't, but I mean, I liked it too. Uh, but the worst thing of that, of course, is dad's Christmas gift to mom. Oh, yes, you can tell that story. So my dad bought a 1958 Jaguar XK150 uh, in 1977, and he would go through periods where he would work on it uh, that were far and few between, and then the car would just sit for years or decades in the garage but when he was fired up to work on it um he uh, that christmas uh mom got a it was probably the early 80s i think uh mom got a big heavy package christmas morning big box from dad big heavy thing she was all excited she opened it up and it was a used generator for the jaguar <laughs> and dad thought that was hilarious and i still remember the just look of just just Clenched, clenched jawed anger on mom's face. So I'm never going to be that bad. No, because unlike your mother, I would bounce it off your head. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know. Just thoughtlessly cruel. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, from Super Cruise. Hi, Spencer. Question for next week. Do you ever run into subtile minute hands on 6138, 6139s that are difficult or stuck on the minute counter wheel pinion? I have two sets of Horotech hand levers I use along with some thin sheet plastic to remove these hands. Sometimes the subdial hand is stuck or difficult to remove. I do not want to use too much force for fear of damaging the dial. Any tips you might offer for removing these stuck hands is appreciated. I have a couple tricks. Uh, the first one I learned from a Rolex tech is I take a basically a, a section of, of thickish plastic like for um, a good quality little Ziploc bag and I put that over the whole thing and then I take the hand removers and I go under it so the plastic is pinched between the underside of the hand and the top of the dial and the hand itself is also contained so it doesn't go Bleak! and I go and I just work it and I haven't ever had problems with that. Um, if something is really fighting me and I can't get it off, there is another way. And what I do is I take a piece of that same plastic and I cut a little slot in it and I basically, I get a little hole, I, I make it so I sleeve it around that pinion and the hole th underneath then between the hand and the dial is plastic. Then what I do is I take a piece of um, Rotico, a little blob of Rotico and I put it over the top of the hand to hold it in place. And then I, I flip the movement over. Um, I'm sorry, no. Then I don't flip the movement over. Then I, I loosen the dial, basically. And then I, I, I very carefully pry up the dial with the dial ring. And the, use the dial itself to push up. Because it's got plastic in there. And it'll it, anyone that has fought me with the tools doesn't fight me that way. And with the plastic in between, the hand and the dial itself... I've never had a problem, never once, but it's something to be real careful about. You want to make sure that that hand doesn't go flying and you put the rotico on the top. He found my keys. <laughs> yeah. He's making the car beep. Sebastian! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> uh, a uh, this is from Squiddy8. I'm a huge black, classic black Submariner fan, but that GMT is nice. If you don't need or particularly want to sell it, I say keep it for sure. As you'll know yourself, you'll never lose anything on it no matter how long you keep it. I hope that's true. I hope that's true. These were worth like 300 bucks back in the 90s, but now... I just think it's a, an elegant, lovely watch. And on this strap, it tones down the gold, which I like. 
and it just makes it wearable. Okay, I skipped ahead to this, and I read this guy's quote. These two questions I have not done. Oh, they're shirt related. They're shirt related. Oh, also I want to say something. So you just heard me probably yelling at Sebastian to stop. In another video, there was screaming in the background and somebody thought it was me. No, it was Sadie. Sadie was screaming at Sebastian. She's taken to screeching at him when he displeases her. It was not me. I'm not a screaming lunatic. Unless my children are disturbing the neighborhood by making the car beep. I put your keys on top of the fridge. Thank you. Ah, I can't breathe. From Eric Scherer, shirt logo is great. I like that you were picky about the quality. When you get a winner, I'll certainly get one. We ordered another one, which I'm currently wearing, to try it out. And it's even worse than the last one. Like you can see her skin tone yeah, through the shirt. Through the shirt. And that's like what happens when you wash it many times. I can't imagine. I mean, why could, I mean this this shirt here, which is this is Brooks Brothers, it's old, but I mean t shirts used to be nice like this. This isn't like so thick it block a radioactive blast, but I mean that's pretty heavy duty. Uh -huh. do, do they make t shirts like this, this heaviness? Not really. That's too that's what I was really imagining. No. Something really nice quality. Well I'm gonna try American apparel and mm. the only reason why I didn't get that is because everybody complained they were too long, but I'd rather have if my skin be covered. <laughs> right. Well what about just flat out fruit of the loom? Uh, then we would have to get them printed and order them here and have them shipped here and then ship them out to people. As really? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay, so then the next shirt one. From Tim Lara, 100% agree on heavier t-shirts. I don't know if it's a cost thing, everybody cutting corners, nobody wants to pay for quality, or if market stats actually suggest consumers prefer thin, lightweight shirts, but it seems like for whatever reason, 98% of the shirts people are selling are the cheapo kind, which really bums me out when I find an otherwise cool design. It's true. The other thing is we got all these shirts from T Public, and they were really cool, and then you wash them a few times, and the... the um, What's it called? Printing. The printing on it would stick together. So then I pull it apart and then the thing would come apart and it would just start washing away. Right. Like the design would just fade. Like one of my favorite ones is a, is a quick scene is Hank Scorpio from the Simpsons. <laughs> and it was actually a pretty nice quality shirt. It really was decent. Uh, but it's like you can barely make up the picture anymore. Yeah. I have that on a few of mine or like my Deadpool one. It started just tearing apart after <clears throat> a few washes. I don't know. So, and it, this doesn't count with the dryer because this was happening in the summer when I was hanging laundry on the line. It's the washing machine. So, yeah, t-shirt quality sucks. I mean, the only thing you could do, uh, we could do about that is to wash them inside out, but you shouldn't have to. No. I mean, I had t-shirts when I was in the 90s back in the day, and I wore, I wore them for five years, six years, seven years. Remember all those shirts you made me throw out? They were still they were, wearable. No, they were rotten <laughs> with holes in them. But the designs look good. Yeah, but they were rotten with holes in them. Yeah, but that's not, but they were good quality shirts to have lasted that long. Yes, I agree. All right. Um, okay, so you read that one. I did. Okay. From Paul Colley. Hi, quick question. I accidentally changed the date on my Seiko during the forbidden time zone. What are the chances of damaging the mechanism and would I be able to tell if damage had been done? Um, what? It's, there's this thing. Early watches, if you changed the day date in between like 3 p.m. and and, and like, I'm sorry, between 9 p.m. and like 3 a.m., you could jack up the day date selectors it's it's not really a big problem anymore. Seiko was aware of this in the 60s, and they really worked to make it so it wasn't a big deal. They have it set up so there's there's clearance and backsliding capability for stuff like that. Some of the, like the Seiko 7619s came out in the 60s. Those, if you set them, if you try to set the date, quick set the date in between nine and three in the morning, it actually drives the date wheel backwards against the date setting and the whole quick set will disintegrate. But that's very much an exception. Um, if you're not noticing any problems, then there aren't any. Uh, though it would help to know what kind of Seiko you have. From Jojo, a jewel in the rough. I'm looking for a 6105 from January of 73. I found one a while back, but it had the guy's name scribed on the back. I'll keep looking. Man, finding a day date, uh, finding a, a, a month year birth watch 
for Seiko, that's tough. Finding one that's a 6105, that's pretty tough. I mean, having the guy's name on the back, it's a minor problem. How did the loom look? Because that's what really matters. The loom and the case condition. Don't worry about the case back. Who's going to see it? But the fact that it was your date, man, I'd go back and try and find that one. From Michael Sands. Oh, I totally agree on Larry Uncle Seiko's bracelets. I own a bunch and love them all, including his most excellent Z199 recreation that I keep on an all original early production 7S26A powered SKX009K. But that doesn't stop me from wanting an original. By the way, I dig the shirt logo and very glad to hear you're looking out for quality. Design wise, my only suggestion would be to make the logo a bit smaller for a more understated look. Hey, we could have just had it be giant. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, no. you could do that on the back. I don't like that. You don't like that? I don't like back things. You don't like back designs on shirts? No, I really don't. Hmm. That's why I don't like your one rugby shirt. <clears throat> Another cool thing to consider would be making a dark color shirt and printing the logo with loom embedded white ink. That'd be cool. That'd be wild. Deep Blue Watches had done this for years now. I've had one forever, and it's one of my all-time favorite t-shirts. The damn thing still glows after 10 plus years of wearing and washing. Wow. Well, if you, 10 years, if you can look, look, tell us the brand of that shirt. If it's still on the tag. Um... I don't know how to pronounce your last name, sorry. Joey Cash? Maybe. I don't know. Hi, Spencer, where'd you get the band? This this band, he was asking about this band. So we've been, I've been toying with having a strap made for quite some time. There's a couple different designs I've been thinking about. One of them is this. Somebody asked about this strap, and it's a kind of vented tropic strap that I actually really like. I think it's really neat. We we're talking with one person who's a professional designer about basically recreating these in the different widths necessary. Um, I did have this briefly on the 62 MAS, but then, um, because that is no longer here, um, I went and I put it on this watch, which I call, which I call Tony Stark. And the reason I call it Tony Stark is that I built this watch literally in my man cave out of a box of scraps. The only two parts of this watch that are original to this watch are the case and the case back. Everything else, like I built the movement out of random parts that I had. I mean, it's a, it's a 6105B, correct for this watch, or correct for actually the dial, which is a resist marked. Um, but I, I literally, it was like, I, I found the best possible escape wheel in my junk stuff, best possible third wheel in my junk stuff, best possible main plate, all that kind of crap. And so I built this literally out of scraps. But anyway, I really like this strap. I really like this strap. And we're talking about recreating these. I even like the material, which is sort of a, not a grippy, sticky rubber. It's sort of a more, I don't know, it's more of a slick feeling. I hate it when um, rubber straps like grab and grip and kind of sticky. It bugs the hell out of me. Anyway, so that's what I'm considering. So there's the strap and it's sitting there on Tony Stark. Um, I believe he was asking about this band. Uh, there was a guy in Canada and his parents operated a watch strap business. I think a mail order business and they both passed and he inherited a house filled with boxes of watch straps, boxes and boxes, like industrial amounts of watch straps. And he has been selling on eBay. Um, he has an unbelievable, like all this like vintage stuff. And most of it's kind of kind of junky, but he came across a box of these Tropic 2000s in all different widths, and they sold out so quickly that between my finding the auctions and being able to order any strap, all of them were gone except for the 18s, and they're all entirely gone now. Um, so that's one of the reasons I'm thinking about recreating these straps. Last nine breaker. Uh, Spencer, question. A new Seiko I've had for only a year has started developing an issue that I'm sure isn't proprietary to just its 6021 movement. Lately, the second hand won't move when shaking the watch, winding the watch, or even shaking after winding it to full power. The only remedy is when I pull the crown and move the hands, then the second hand will start moving. Are you familiar with this, and do you think I should get a service soon? 
Uh, probably that's pretty weird. I mean, because they're supposed to the way the watches work is they 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 should kick off on their own. Um, something's dragging it down. Something's stopping it. I would also be curious to know once you have it running and it's up to full power, what the numbers are. The numbers will tell us everything. <laughs> Seiko Scar, a nice logo, just my humble opinion, but is the logo on the shirt a bit large? Um, I think sizing it down 10 to 15% would look better. Apparently, I have to make it smaller. The nice thing is, we're just in the test phase. Yes, I'm spending money testing, but. But that's okay, you have to. I know. You've got to make money to spend money. Yes, yes, yes. From Ross Duggan, that's a great piece. Glad you got a hold of it to restore it. I'm sure the kids in the background bother you more than the viewers. <laughs> they bother me. <laughs> I have three kids. One of them is the same age as your youngest. These are fun times. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, that's what you always say. Oh, you know, these are fun times. Your Irma Bombeck used to go on about, you know, that you, the, when the years go by after these days are all over, and you'll, you'll clean things and say, I want this to stay where it was, and it will. And you 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 want to basically you'll you'll miss your children drawing all over the walls and they and bonking on their door at two in the morning and and beating on the dog and all this stuff and yeah beating the dog with a with a enamel bowl and walking up to the cat and smacking him in the head for no reason and the state of the wait till you go see the living room what he did <laughs> I don't want to see the living room I will clean it I don't I'm not telling you to do anything but it's like. So, yeah, maybe these are the fun times. I mean, who knows what happens when when I'm old. And and, and, and I'm like, oh, because Dad always used to talk about the kids. Oh, you know, when the kids were small. But, you know, who knows? He didn't have to deal with anything. Not only that, he was a monster back then. Yeah, well, that's not... My point is it was a 50s thing where... He, he was at work all the time. Yeah, he didn't have to deal with it, so he could moon over the... The kids being kids, but yeah, know. I will give him credit though. He always played with our our our, our kids. Mm -hmm. He would get right down on the ground with them and play. Yep. Okay, on to the next one. From CMB, I seriously regret selling my non-running bezel of sixty-two MAS for three hundred. <laughs> years back before they became so sought after, I couldn't source a bezel and thought I never would. Now they are reproduced. So, with that. Mint case back and dial. That is a hard decision you have, Spencer. If someone were to offer you 6K. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, it's just, it. I'll never be able to replace it. I just, I. it's the nicest one I'd ever personally owned. I think I've owned five now. But unfortunately, as my grandfather used to say, money doesn't talk, it screams. And I'm, I'm, it's going to a very good home, but that home is not this home. And it is... It is flying away right now, um, and I was very sad to pack it up. I'm, I'm not lying. I, I won't sugarcoat it. I was pretty depressed about that. But, you know, we're trying to get to zero debt, and that is, um, you know, it is it is what it is. It was fun bringing it back. I really enjoyed I enjoyed the restoration, and uh, it was nice to take that watch and, uh, and to bring it back to life. And it's going to definitely a very good house to somebody who has bought some other very nice watches of mine, guy who has my best true pogue. Um, is going to have that watch. So it's going to a good place. From Alonzo Cushion. I have a very beautiful 6217 MAS, but the one you worked on is certainly outstanding. And while you are very modest, Spencer, Sabrina is obviously proud of you. I am. I know, and that was that was gratifying. That was gratifying. You know, I'm just... It, it, I like a watch with history, and there's certain things I, I like more. I mean, that watch, in terms of its condition, was just like... And even I, I did okay on the loom restoration, which I was pretty proud of too. But uh, I would have loved to, to have added a 62 MAS back into the box for uh, for good, forever. And uh, I thought that was going to be the one. But you know, we've got to do this fiscal responsibility thing and get to zero debt. And so that's what we're trying to do. You know, if you ever get bored of your 62 MAS. Let me know. I have an empty spot in my box. You will find another one. You always say, I don't have a blank. I'm never going to get another one. And then you get another one. Yeah, like this. I, I said to myself, even though you but never... But that's not yours. I know it's not mine. But I said to myself, when I first found out about these, I'm like, I'm never going to see one of those in the flesh. <laughs> there it is. Oh, we should take a break and talk about this. So thing. I got oh, super right. excited about this. Because at first, when I opened the box, we didn't know what it was. Um... Uh, I thought it was a, a standard quartz 
At first glance, I thought it was a standard quartz Flightmaster. But then, as Sabrina will attest, I got super excited. Super duper excited. Because these, I never thought I'd see one of these in the flesh. 6S37 Limited Edition Flightmaster. These were made in 2003. There were only 300 of them, titanium. Um, and this is this is a movement that was um, Seiko really like really went to the wall to uh, when they designed this movement. Um, they did a pretty amazing job of it. Um, trying to think if you can see here because it's got some classic features. Look at it's got a it's got a, a pillar. Look at that pillar wheel. It's got um, mechanical sideways coupling. Um, it's 40 joules. These are these are incredible movements. Seiko decided at a certain point to stop making this movement, and they went instead to the uh, 8R, I believe. But the thing with the 8R is that it's a it's one of the 7S derivations, and it's a chronograph in the sense that it has a module bolted to the front. So it's a three-hand movement with a module on the front, um, kind of like the Speedmaster Reduced, whereas this is a purpose-built chronograph. This is a chronograph. But Seiko stopped making this for whatever reason, and then they sold the production rights of this movement to um, uh, to uh, Young Hands. But then, more notably, they sold it to uh, Tag Heuer, and Tag Heuer came out about ten years ago, and they said, "Oh, well, we've got the the brand new Tag Heuer caliber 1887." And, uh, oh, it's our movement and everything else like this. And they tried to sort of act like it was all super cool and everything. And then people noticed that it was identical to this. <laughs> uh, apparently, it's they have the rights to the design uh, that they make the whole thing in Switzerland. But, I mean, who knows? They did make some changes. The, the size of the main plate is bigger and some other stuff. But, anyway, this is a, that's a super cool watch. Bi-directional, slide rule. Whew, God, that's a beauty. Titanium, and for such a big watch because it's titanium, geez, it just doesn't weigh a thing. Power reserve indicator. God darn it, I'd love one of these. I don't know how often I'd wear it, but man, that's a beast. Yikes. Anyway, rear watch, one of 300. Uh, same customer also got a 6105 from Japan. So anyway... Pretty neat stuff. I'm holding these for him until he comes back from vacation. Anyway, so what do you think about this thing? I think it's pretty cool. Do you? Yeah. Pretty blingy? Yes. Would you would you would you rock it? No. <laughs> it's really it's pretty big. It's a little too much for me. I love the fact that it's a purpose-built chronograph though, that it's not a module. And you know, but say typical Seiko, they they chose the path, the path of Less money. Thank you, Seiko. When they could have they could have still been making that thing. Oh well. We're really unorganized. We today. are we're we're never organized. You know what that last video I did in the sixty two MES, for which I had no plan, people liked that video. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, you know, I never thought I'd see one of these. What a piece. Crazy. You know, but anyway, Alonzo Cushing. If that is your real name, though I, though, <laughs> though, though I know that it's not. It's uh, not. Um, a, 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 any case, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. You bought your sixty-two MAS brand new, and that's pretty cool. Anyway, but that's it. Someday I'll have one again. You will. I hope. Zero debt. Zero debt. Uh, from Meltdown GRFX. How did you? Fill in those empty markers with the loom, a brush, or some improvised tool. Uh, there's no easy way to do it uh, because you got. I had to not only match the color using original Seiko loom um, that I harvested from different damaged dials and hands in different places. I had to mix it to the right color and the right consistency, and then be able to get it to replicate that that deeply laid in thing. It was a mix of pegwood. And round toothpicks that I carved to a chisel shape. Uh, at one point, I used um, the reverse end of a sewing needle with the teeny tiny hole in it because that carries liquid because of surface tension. 
Um, I used Rotico in a couple of different ways. There's all kinds of different tricks that I do. There's no one answer. It, it depends on what I'm trying to fill and what I'm trying to do and how fine I need to be. And it, am I filling something or layering it on top? And it's it's a lot of work. That relooming just those two plots was... Oh, I was a couple, three hours of work in like three different sessions. It was a lot of work. I know. I was looming at midnight. I know. Anyway. From Tom O'Keefe. Hi, Spencer. Thanks for your response. This is the gentleman with the 62 MAS with the shrapnel damage. Well, why didn't you get... Oh, because there was a whole front section talking about it. Where? I don't know. It's in the... I, I, I didn't copy the whole thing because I answered it. Do you want me to bring it up? Oh, no. It's fine. Uh, he basically he talks about how he sent that watch to us and that he's very happy with the job that he did and that he wears it and and that it has such a unique history. This gentleman bought his sixty two MAS um, when he was serving in the military in Vietnam, and it got um, an RPG came into his into his area where they were and a piece of shrapnel hit the watch and hit the crown and actually dented the crown. And I was very honored to be able to um, was restore that watch for him and send it back. Okay. Anyway. anyway. <clears throat> I watch your videos often. You and your wife have a wonderful way of engaging your viewers. You must feel great about the respect and admiration you have earned in the watch business. I hope you don't mind if I keep in touch. I recently retired from my high school principal's position so I have more time to talk with friends. However, honestly, I miss the kids. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can answer, how is it possible that elementary school or teacher administrators can meet a child that they knew when the child was like six and meet them when they're 26 or 36 and be like, oh yeah, I know who you are. How is that possible? Because it's happened more than once to me. How do you remember every single kid? Or when I go to pick up, well, it's the elementary school, but when I go and pick up uh, my daughter, they know exactly who I am and who my daughter is. I, I, I love the idea of seating going back to elementary school and getting yelled at by her teacher. For not being nice to Willow. No, it wasn't her teacher. It oh, it was another teacher? It was Willow's teacher. No, but she yelled at her fifth grade teacher for teaching her math wrong. <laughs> because they taught the the modern new math thing when she was in elementary school. I don't think they really do that anymore. And when she went to middle school, she suddenly, like, she didn't know how to multiply, like, immediately. So um, she got really mad, and she went up to her fifth grade teacher and kind of at her about it and the teacher was like <laughs> anyway i'm glad you watch our videos and it's always nice for you to write us and i'm always happy to hear of you and as i said in my response to you i literally was thinking about your watch when i was uh restoring that 62 mas i don't know why this next one happened from Willie Baba, Spencer looks like he needs a cigar a horse in the cuban countryside i didn't know what that meant but <laughs> what uh, video was it on uh the one where i said i look puffy were you, what shirt were you wearing? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, what kind of hat? A cigar, a horse, in a Cuban countryside. Well, I mean, I'd love to go to Cuba. I'd love to go to Cuba. We'd love to go to Cuba. I'd go to Cuba in a second. That'd be cool. I don't know about smoking a cigar, but if I was in Cuba, I'd certainly consider it. Uh, and horses, you know, the thing with horses, they just want to live their lives. They don't want to be messed with, and they just want to go and stand under a tree. They don't... So what? You'd be... With a cigar in the Cuban countryside next to a horse. Well, that's fine. And I'd say hello to the horse. Yes, I know. <laughs> I like horses. Yeah. I just, you know, they've got their own things to do. From Jack the Cat. Spencer, I have so much trouble with the 7009 calendar works. To me, it was a very bad design. My junk box is full of 7009 cases and movements, now parts, because the day portion of the calendar decides to no longer work. Have you had problems with the 7009? Any suggestions? Thanks. 7006 and 7009 are the same thing. You, um, you pull the crown and rotate to do the date. To change the day, you push in the crown. Uh, I don't think I've, I can't ever remember having real problems with those things. This is the gentleman, by the way, who mm -hmm. um, talked about us sounding like a porn video. Oh, but he didn't answer that. He never answered us. Oh, I'm sad. I cannot speak for what you're seeing, but that seems like an extremely unusual problem. It's not one that I can ever remember seeing um, personally. 
uh, those movements are quite robust. Um, I mean, it's a different assembly. You push in the crown and it has a lever that turns the thing, but unless the underside of like your crown is all jacked up or, or stuffed with gruck that you can't push it in fully, it should work fine. So I, I, I can't remember seeing one ever doing that, never mind a drawer of them. Um, I could dig out a 7,009 real quick, but I, I would check other things. I would pull the movement and put the stem back in and then check it without the case around it and see if it does that. Um, you got to take it apart to see what it's doing if it is doing it. But there was something else you said you were going to do. I did? I don't remember. You can keep talking. Sorry. I don't know. I think it had to do with this. That. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Uh, I can demonstrate a two-piece secondhand. I'll make a little video and, and tack it onto the end of this thing. They're just they're just a difference in design because the A's, the A chronographs didn't have an adjuster for the hammer. And so it was just, it was one of these things they made it so the hand was sort of independently settable. Um, but then they got rid of that when they went to the B and they, everybody's seen this a thousand times. Everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> Sorry, you just don't want to do it. Well, I just don't want to bore people. I mean, I've talked about the A and the B differences so many times. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll tack in a little video, but that's it. In theory, I might get some MG work done, though I've done actually work the last two weekends and I've completely forgotten to, to film it. Um, I don't know. I just I haven't been focused on the MG. Anything else from you? No. Hmm. Not looking forward to going upstairs because he's been quiet. Yep, that's no fun. Okay, well, thank you so much for your comments and all that other kind of stuff. And we are moving on in the world and getting on with life. And it's Friday, which means it's pizza day. Yay. I reminded Willow that it was pizza day. Daddy, you don't have to tell me it's Friday. It's pizza day. I know it's pizza day. <laughs> she was just telling me Friday's her favorite day because it's pizza day. Oh, well, that's good to know that she enjoys it. Okay, we are out of here. Okay, Talk bye. to you later. Bye.